Louis Patron back with the Key West Lou Legal Hour. Thank you again for joining me. I always say thank you because I'm so pleased that so many of you from so many places watch this show. In addition to doing the show, this television internet show, I, I write a column. I write a blog every morning called keywestlou.com. It's on the screen right now below me, keywestlou.com. Please read it. You should read it. Uh, it, it it isn't much. I just tell people what I did the day before in Key West, okay? I got a haircut yesterday. I got my beard trimmed. Uh, I visited with my daughter's new dog, Jake. Uh, I had dinner at Sandy's. I, I watched, we had bocce. We lost three games. I played lousy. I watched the basketball game, Syracuse, Indiana, at Don's place. The people I watched it with. I got to bed one in the morning. I'm shot this morning. Things like that. But people read it. People enjoy it. And you may enjoy it also. And I believe if you read it three days in a row, you may read it forever because it's a reality show in writing. That's how I look at it. It's my life in writing. Okay, besides that, I write a column once a week for Conk Life uh, where I talk about things like this, one major article. And generally, I hit someone between the eyes who I think is doing something wrong on the national or international scene. And I've also started a radio show. I'm into the 10th week of my radio show. It's Blog Talk Radio on the internet, Tuesday nights at 9 o'clock, only a half hour talk show, talk about current events. If you want to know how to find all these things, that's called Tuesday Talk with Key West Lou. Obviously, I'm Key West Lou. Uh, read my blog in the morning. It tells you how to find everything, the site numbers, and so forth. We are going to Russia now. Russia is sponsoring the Winter Olympics next year, 2014, the Winter Olympics in Russia. As you've seen from the past few years, the weather conditions aren't always the same. Where you're supposed to have snow, it's warm. Where it's supposed to be warm, you have cold weather. Russia is concerned they will not have enough snow for the Olympics next year. So they're doing the job properly. They are a proud people. They've had a bad winter. They're taking the snow and they're storing their snow. They have accumulated 119 million gallons of snow. They have taken it to the top of some mountain in Russia where it's cold obviously all year long. They've covered the snow with some kind of a thermal seal. So they're going to have snow for the Olympics next year even if there isn't any snow. And you know how much this is costing Russia? $11 million to save the snow. I think it's a wonderful thing they're doing, and I'm doing, and I'm glad they've got the money. Uh, $11 million, and they're going to save snow for a whole year on top of a mountain. Let's talk about this day in history. I'm only going to talk about one thing on this day in history because I think it's absolutely fantastic. The day in history, today's March 29th. We're going to go back to the year 1886. The man's name is John Pemberton. John Pemberton, Atlanta, Georgia. He is a pharmacist. He's the man who invented Coca-Cola. I'll bring you to the end before I bring you to the beginning. He invented Coca-Cola, this guy. He was a pharmacist. And here's how it all started. On this day in history, he started advertising Coca-Cola. He was a Confederate. He fought for the South in the Civil War. He got wounded. He had some saber cuts across his chest. Very painful, and they treated him with morphine to kill the pain, as they treated many of the soldiers back then on both sides who were injured. Morphine to kill the pain, and many of them became addicted to morphine, and Pemberton became addicted to morphine. He had to get rid of this problem, he figured, so he's a pharmacist. He starts experimenting, and he gets into cocoa beans and cocoa and cocoa wine, cocoa wine, cocoa wine, and cocoa beans, and he comes up with a, something he calls Pemberton's French Wine Cola. Pemberton's French Wine Cola. Now, this is good for everything. He reminds me of one of those guys we see in the movies occasionally, in an, an old Western, who stands on the back of, uh, of his, whatever that thing he rides in is. I've got a mental block. Uh, his, whatever. And he's selling stuff in a bottle that cures everything. This cures nervousness, stomach irregularities, bowel and kidney problems. It's also a stimulant. And it cures headaches. This is what he's pitching everybody. And for women, apparently back in those days, 
they thought women were screwed up. They called it neurasthenia. Neurasthenia. I've never heard the term. Probably none of you have. But this is what women had, or they thought they had back then, because they were too high strung. They were too nervous all the time. And this would calm them down. Well, he did good. This thing's selling. People are buying it as a, an alcoholic drink, the wine, and they're feeling good afterwards. I think it would give them a headache as opposed to preventing one. Be that as it may, now comes prohibition. Not the big prohibition we found in the 1920s here in this country, but back in the 1890s, the city of Atlanta, Georgia, where he's working and making this stuff, has prohibition just for the city of Atlanta and the county it's in. I think it was called Franklin County. I couldn't be wrong. He can't sell this stuff anymore. He's got to do something. So he's a pharmacist again. He's got to come up with a non-alcoholic alternative. He's screwing around in his pharmacy, and it's taking him months, and he's mixing this, and he's mixing that, and he can't come up with anything. All of a sudden, by accident, he mixes some syrup he's concocted with carbonated water. Syrup and carbonated water wasn't supposed to be mixed with the carbonated water. And came up with, you've got to believe it, this is it, Coca-Cola. Tasted good. Knew he had it. One problem. A little cocaine in it. <laughs> I think this is amazing. A little cocaine in it. I don't know if it's still there today. But a little cocaine in it made everybody feel good. Very invigorating. Uh, and it, again, it took care of the, the headaches. It took care of everything. And he kept it as a secret formula, by the way. And he made a ton of money before he sold coke out just uh, before the year, before 1900. But John Pemberton, who made Coca-Cola, started pitching it, advertising it on this day, not as coke, but as the, the coke wine, the French alcoholic wine. And eventually it developed into what we know today as Coca-Cola, and he got to it by accident with just a touch of cocaine. All right. Man's ingenuity <laughs> is amazing. That's all I can say. It's amazing. This story is going to prove you never know what people are going to think up. Okay? We're a very ingenious and inventive society. There is a professional baseball team. It's a minor league team, but it's the top of the minor leagues. It's called the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs is the top minor league affiliate in the Philadelphia Phillies system. They're big time. They want their fans to be happy all the time. So, in the men's bathroom, not in the ladies, in the men's bathroom at the urinal, they put a video screen, okay, above the urinal. So when a man's standing up and he's doing his business, he can look in the screen. Uh, the machine turns on. The video turns on automatically when it senses the presence of a body before it. Now, how do you, and it's a game machine, and how do you change channels and you move back and forth? You direct your flow in that direction. If you want to go to the left, you move your flow to the left. If you want to go to the right, you move your flow to the right. This thing's a winner. Everyone loves it on the male side, and they're going to put it in more sports arenas. I think that's fantastic. Stupid idea, absolutely brilliant. We're going to commercial break. Stay with me. I will return.